Hey everyone, it's Tara. Welcome to A Loop Through a Loop. Thanks for coming to hang out with me today. I'm so glad to be here with you. We're gonna go through some April making and not too much chit chat, but just a little bit. I am loving our weather in Lexington right now. I know this is not the same in all places, but the back and forth of cool and warm, it's, I can't, I'm really liking it because I can wear my hand knits in the morning and be snuggly and cozy. And by the afternoon, I have my socks off, shorts on and some slides. And I'm just like, totally happy. I'm going out on a limb here. Spring is my favorite, even more than fall. Ooh. The only downside are the allergies and the sniffles, but we have Zyrtec for that. <laughs> okay, so in the month of April, I've still been doing quite a bit of knitting. I don't think I have any plans on slowing down how much knitting I'm doing, but I do know that a great way to track my progress on getting healthy is by looking at the types of projects that I'm choosing. First, let's start with what I'm wearing, which is my first finished object. I had started this in March and I had mentioned it and held it up a little bit, but didn't talk too much about it. This is Sheep Camp by Jennifer Berg and it is a DK weight sweater. I still follow Jennifer's design, but I kind of twisted up some of the stuff to, you know, make it more me, put my flavor on it. So I used um, this yarn right here. I held this double in the color work section. This is a yarn be hand dyed um, and I don't remember the name and I don't know that it's pertinent for me to tell you the name because small sidebar. I enjoy going to Hobby Lobby. I know people have their reasons for not shopping there. I get it, whatever. You do what's do good for you and I support your decision. But I still, I like Hobby Lobby because the stuff that they have, I enjoy, <laughs> so I go there. But there have been some recent changes and the yarn section has gotten way smaller. To be honest, for a big box store, they had a good yarn selection. They really did. And that's one reason why, like I'll go to Michael's or Joann's, but I always leave disappointed because the yarn selection is, eh. It's just so, so it's not, there's nothing that I'm like, yes, that's the yarn where Hobby Lobby, I'd be like, okay, yes, I would like to use that. I would like to try that. And there are some definite <clears throat> yarns I will not use from there because I don't like them, but I'm not going to tell you the colorway of it because it's probably going to be gone. That's a fingering weight held double. And then in my main color here is a Madeline Tosh color and I would pull it out except it's in the bottom of this basket and it's a DK weight and I think it's kind of like a one of a kind color. I don't think it had another color, at least I can't remember. But the reason I paired these together, I knew it would be a low contrast and a low contrast so low that it would be quite uh, tricky in some lights to even make out what the color work is. I did that on purpose because when I looked at this main color, it kind of just reminded me of, um, oh shoot. What did it remind me of? Like tarnishing almost like when something like it or an ancient tapestry, I just liked that feel. This feels more neutral because of the low contrast. I, at the heart of things, I like a lower contrast. I know that the color work is not as bold and vibrant as a lot of Sheep Camp sweaters that are out there. It's not super graphic and that's okay. Like I like this ancient tapestry look. And so, there's that on the cuffs. All of my edgings are done in linen quill held double. I just used what I had in my stash. I figured this turquoise and this red were colors that reminded me of Jennifer, like the jewelry that she wears. I kind of wanted to mimic sort of 
the feel of her jewelry, like a bangle. So like a turquoise bangle or like she has a turquoise beaded necklace. And then I also did it at the hem. When it goes to the fit of my sweater, I did change some things. So I wear backpacks a lot just because I want my hands free. With four kids, there's a lot to juggle. And the last thing I need is to worry about a purse. That means I like to have garments that aren't necessarily tight fitting around the underarm, but I can't really feel comfortable in anything that's like a poncho, swancho, low cut underarm thing. So I tend to go a little more traditional in how far to uh, knit my yoke depths. And so in order to get what I have here, I did take out um, a portion of the chart. And this was easy to do because um, in the chart, all your increases are kind of up in this part, in the upper part of the chart. And by the time you get to what looks like the little arrows, it's just straight across, no increases. So it was super easy to take one of those out to shorten the chart so then I could just have a depth that would make it easier for me to wear my backpack. Um, one day I might re-knit this and do the full chart and do more of a swancho-ish lower yoke thing, but we'll see that that fit doesn't necessarily sing to me. I see pictures of other people online and I think oh, it looks gorgeous on them, but I just don't know if I'm that kind of gal that's okay and then what i did is in the body because the flare out in the back of a sweater annoys the bejesus out of me so what i did is i did have some very it wasn't severe shaping to bring it in but just some slow soft shaping to kind of bring the body in just a little bit so that when i step back you don't really notice that it goes in it just kind of looks like it comes straight down but what i did is i took the stitches i didn't i did not do my decreases on the side i actually did them on the back which was a gamble like i was just like i don't know if this is gonna work if it don't work i'm gonna take it out because i can't and that doesn't bother me <clears throat> but what has happened here is that if i scoot up here you see it fits nicely around my body. It's still loose. It's not super tight. Listen, after four babies or just getting older in general, things are a little more squishy than they used to be. Okay. I don't want to show my squish off to everybody. Never in my life have I ever wanted to show my body off. I like being covered. I'm very comfortable that way. So I like having a little bit of room in my sweaters, but I also want it fitted because there's nothing wrong with my body. I just want to be comfortable. So something that fits well, um, but has room is something I always strive for. So you can see I don't have a gape in the back. So what I did is I decreased, I figured out Okay, so what is my circumference measurement that I have here once I've separated? And I knit down maybe, I don't know, a couple inches, two, three inches. And then I thought, okay, so from here, once I get past the bust, which I don't know, I don't have much of that either, but once I got past it, how do I want it to fit around my midsection? I want maybe... I think I have maybe like one or two inches of positive ease, maybe two inches of positive ease. I would say two inches of positive ease. I want two inches of positive ease by the time I get to the bottom. So then I thought, well, okay, I'll slowly decrease two stitches every so many rows. And then once I did that, when I got to my bottom hem, what I've also learned is instead of 
for my gauge, my tension, if I go down three needle sizes, I get my proportions of stockinette to ribbing. The gauge between those two fabrics with my tension works better for me. If I go down three needle sizes. So it just keeps everything clean. Now, sometimes that changes depending on the project. Um, and then for the neck, I think I talked about this in the other podcast. Like I tried it with, uh, I did, this is a rolled neckline. So part of what I really have learned is how I like my necklines. So when I do a sweater, I don't knit the neck bands first if the pattern calls for it. I don't do that, I skip it. And I just cast on for the yoke. And then I'll go back and I'll pick up stitches around the neckline and knit whatever neck band I need. So when I did that this time, I tried it with just my regular, the needle I used for the main fabric. Too tight, couldn't get it over my head. So I went one needle size up. And because I do the neck band last, whether it's a ribbing or a rolled hem or an eye cord or whatever, because I do it last, that seam that it gives me around my neck helps keep the neck where I want it. I don't like the neckline to stretch out. It just is not, well, let's just call it what it is. I think it looks sloppy. <laughs> and I don't want my work to be sloppy. <laughs> You know, I got four kids running around. I want at least one thing to look put together. I mean, look at my hair, it's ridiculous. The sleeves are not, they're not really three quarter length sleeves and they're not bracelet length. So I'm gonna call them five eighths. Okay, that's everything about this. Let's talk about finished objects really quick. I did make another shrug. I made this just like my other ones. This time, um, so this is the Saturday Shrug designed by Jackie Rose, free pattern on Ravelry. And what I ended up doing was using Holst Garn, Coast, and Super Soft held double. I really like brown and black together. Uh, this is more brown and gray. Um, and this is also much more moody than anything I would ever knit usually, but I just really liked this color combination. Would I knit this pattern with this yarn again? No. Maybe if I held the Holst triple, it just doesn't have that squish like my other shrugs had. You know, Holst is really great um, for color work and oh. I made my water. Way to go. Good job. Okay. I will wear it. I do enjoy it. It fits great. Well, we'll just, I'll show you how it fits. I still really like it. I like this looseness up here. It works for me. So, and I also still just like a cowl putting it around my neck is super cozy. So it works. Do you want to put this on? No. Hmm. Not your colors. So I finished up, I couldn't remember where I was with these socks in the last podcast if I was finishing up the second sock. So I'm just gonna show them to you now. This is designed by Emily Clausen of Salt City Knits. I think it's called Little Bit of Love Socks. And they're just sweet little color work heart socks. This is also knit in Deborah's yarn from Candy Shop Yarns. Sweet love, okay. And I played around with color and I decided to mismatch my cuffs just for fun. Cute pink heel, red on the toe. They're great, I love them. You like these socks? Yeah, cause they're pink. <laughs> then the next socks I made, this is, it's a summerly knit pattern. That's I, don't I think pebbles. it's something cider. It's Cider socks. So they're ribbed, which is why they look so small. But they're ribbed with, can you, hold on, move your face. <laughs> they're ribbed with some cabling. And I know that's hard to see with this kind of sock yarn. Um, this sock yarn was gifted to me. It is 
um, we believe a barnyard yarn, um, but not sure if there's a colorway because it was part of an advent. But these fit fantastic. And then my toes and my cuffs were just with some old stash yarn. Um, I did follow the pattern. Um, well, okay, no, I didn't. I didn't follow the pattern exactly as it was written for these either because um, this middle section, I added a purl stitch between the center cables just to make sure I could get it over my foot okay. I was watching True Lane podcast and she had just made these socks and she talked about how it's kind of hard to get it over her heel and I thought, ooh, okay. So what I did is I added a purl stitch in the back and in the front in the middle of the cable stitch. And so then that gave me two stitches to pull it up over my foot. If I was to make it again, instead of one purl stitch, I would add two purl stitches and then I would have a 64 stitch sock, which on ribbing with cables would be perfect. Then I just finished this pair of socks. None of these socks have been blocked. They've all been worn. <laughs> These are the Cornish tea socks. I know there's more to the name. Honestly, I don't remember the name anymore, but if you go to my Ravelry project pages, it's all linked there. And this is by Helen Stewart. This is part of her Handmade Sock Society volume two. I went ahead and just bought the bundle because that made more sense. Um, I could have just bought the individual pattern, but really the value of buying the bundle was way better. So I have admired this sock pattern for a long time. And then I finally just decided I'm feeling really good. I'm just going to make it. And what I will say is that all three pairs of these socks, once I caught on to the repeating pattern, I, it was easy for me to memorize it. And so that's why they got done all three socks that's why they all got done because I could memorize it I didn't have to be a slave to the pattern and I could work on it wherever I needed to that's okay we'll go get a towel and clean it this sock set is was also gifted to me and it is knit into the max uh, seaside mimosa which I thought I have to knit this pattern with this yarn because seaside, these look like shells to me. Oh dear. Go get a big towel. We have some spillage. We have a lot of spillage. Oh dear. Save the knits. Honey, I need a towel, not a not toilet paper. Well, now is a great time for a transition into work you some progress. And I know if it changed. That's why we just do water. Okay, so works in progress. I finished off the smaller projects like my socks and now I have two sweaters on the needle and these sweaters are going to take me a while. They are long-term. I'm gonna start with, I think I'm gonna start with this one. This is the Sarang sweater. It is all cabled, so the main fabric is cabling every fourth row. It has some welts that are going to be um, incorporated into the design. So this, I've, I've got it started. I have the front and back panels done. All I have to do now is keep knitting on the body and then it will have a lace section. And I'm super excited about this sweater. I think it's gonna be beautiful, but it is definitely a slower knit just because of the nature of the fabric. And I needed something to kind of just slow me down a little bit. I don't wanna be consumed by production and then having all kinds of items that I have, but I don't necessarily want to pull for. I can see Whereas, this is something, it's a color that I really love and it's something I'm enjoying making. I feel like I'm on my way. 
I do really love this color. So to get this color, I am holding these two colors together. So this is Holst Coast. I know this is in powder. I can't remember the name of this one. I took all the labels off of my yarn because I just, I was over it. I was tired of trying to keep track of everything. What I did do is I purchased some Holst color cards. And so this is how I keep track of the colors. It looks like this one is ivory. So powder and ivory together have given me this pink color. When I get to the lace section, I'm going to try using my um, Rowan Alpaca Classic in Soft Satin, all-time favorite, just love this. And since it's lace, it'll be a little bit breathable because since this is, an, it's alpaca and cotton, the alpaca is blown into a cotton tube. Um, but it is alpaca, which means it gets hot. And in Lexington, I don't necessarily need something that's going to be that hot because it's not that cold. Let me see if there's anything else that I really, I kind of just want to give you the meat and potatoes. I'm using the recommended needles. I didn't gauge swatch. I kind of, at this point, since I have knit for a few years and I have a tendency to go back to the same kinds of yarns over and over and over, I am familiar with my gauge using that yarn. And so I can most of the time make a pretty good guesstimate of what size I need to make. And it also does not phase me at all to rip something out and start over. It doesn't bother me at all because I'm like, oh, I didn't know that. Now I do. Let me, let me do it again. Um, I am interested to like, once this is blocked, how it's going to bloom and kind of stretch out a little bit. This is more of a loose fitting, shall we say oversized garment. Um, oversized, but still fits the proportions of my body without looking like I'm walking around in my dad's shirt, like when I was a little girl. You know what I mean? Like things that are oversized, I, you have to have the proportions right for it to not look ridiculous. I haven't picked this up in a couple of weeks just because like on a major sock kick and then I got another itch for the, my next work in project that I was like, oh. So I just lovingly put this aside because um, it's a slow burn like, and plus now that I'm on the body, um, I've kind of like, just was like, I'm ready to set this aside for a little bit. The project that I was like, oh, I wanna cast this on is using Linen Quill in Pink Poppy and it's wrapped up like this because I had to frog several inches off of the yoke because I was playing around with doing some raglan increases and they looked horrible. And so the project I'm talking about is the Bright Sweater by Junko Okamoto. Did I say that right? Well, I hope I did. And I understand this is very bright and that is my intention. This is what I have right now. My gauge, I didn't gauge swatch, shocking, because I've knit with this yarn before, I'm familiar with my gauge, whatever, whatever, whatever. So my gauge does not match the gauge for the pattern, and I'm not gonna try and match the gauge. I'm not gonna dance around with my needle sizes because I like the fabric I get with the US 4. So I wanna keep this fabric, anything more open and loose, I just don't like it. And because there is texture within the sweater, if I open up the gauge, I might lose some of the like definition of the texture work that I'm doing. And I don't want to diminish it in any way. The texture is what I really, really love. So I'm just doing um, the recommended needle sizes and then just going with it. But can we talk about that? Mm. I've not knit, I don't think I've knit any like funnel neck 
turtleneck, nothing. This is my first one and I really like a funnel neck because I still have room around my neck. Remember, I when I was a kid, I, I wore the cotton turtlenecks that were like to my neck and they looked cute. And once they were on, I was just okay. But anything wrapped too tightly around my neck still kind of makes me gaggy. But this is great because it funnels and there's room and I really look so nice. But because my gauge is different, I kind of have to modify it. And I've just decided that when I looked at project pages, after this ribbing here in the front, there's rippling right there. And it's because you do increases, which I just don't like the ripple. I don't like the ripple. So what I've decided to do is I'm not doing that. I'm not going to do the increases the way she has them written. I'm just going to kind of use what I've learned and what I know and go from there. So instead of doing increases along here and then however the rest of the magic is that she writes in the pattern, I'm just going to kind of go to my standard like I'm going to, so where these markers are, this is where the sleeve detail will be. And what I'm gonna do, as you can see, I have, maybe you can't see, cause I keep moving, I'm so sorry. But can you see that I have two markers right there? So one marker, I have one set of markers, which is where the detail on the sleeve is gonna go. And then the next set of markers is where my raglan increases are gonna go. Now, I'm going to break my backpack rule on this and I'm going to knit the yoke a little bit deeper than what I normally would. So then I can have kind of like a turtle dove kind of fit. Turtle dove like uh, Melissa from Espostrico, like what she designed. Um, because it's a shape that I haven't really made before, but I wanna try it. So we'll just see how it goes. If I don't like it, I just rip it out because I've already done it. And I did it on the sleeve. Oh my gosh, that panel that goes down the side of the sleeve for the sweater is so gorgeous. And that was the part that I was just like, oh, maybe if I just keep going, it'll work out. Well, it didn't work out. And then I was just like, just take the needles out and just start ripping. So that's what I did and it all worked out. I picked up my stitches again and I just kind of, once I had everything picked up again, I just fixed individual stitches as I went along. If they were oriented incorrectly on my needles, I just fixed them. If I accidentally had a stitch that dropped, I just fixed it. It wasn't that bad. It wasn't that scary. And so I think something that I'm really learning this past month with my knitting um, is especially with these two sweaters and even with the socks, just being honest with myself, keeping my blinders on to choose patterns and materials that I just so enjoy. If I didn't have YouTube or Ravelry, well, I mean, I'd have to have Ravelry, but if I didn't have social media, so no YouTube, no Instagram, what's something that I would just be like, oh, I just really love this. You know, there, there is a point where slowly over time, it's easy to get sucked in by what everybody else is making. And when I've done that, I've, I've liked what I've made, but I, it's not something I want to hold on to. It's not something that I want to keep. I just kind of had to get very honest with myself and just be like, just because you like this designer or just because everybody is making this right now, doesn't mean that you need to be making it. That is a waste of time. It is a waste of resources and you're not going to have any more joy in the end. Like you're just going to be like, oh. You know, I'm feeling healthy and good and more like my like real self as time goes on, which is such a gift that I don't want to waste that, you know, when you've had who you are, when you think you've had who you are completely taken away from you and you start getting it back, 
it, it's like a whole other world of gratitude and thanksgiving than ever before. Before, I don't know that I would have knit this. I probably would have chose this pink, but I don't know that I would have knit this pattern. But I'm glad I did. I just finally went went through patterns and thought, this pattern scares me a little. This pattern is intimidates me. It scares me. Purchase. <laughs> so I've bought a few patterns that I know in the end, I would just love it. And there's going to be some struggle involved in making it. And I really need that struggle so that I can prove to myself that I can do it. And that maybe the things that we think are so scary aren't so. And, you know, fear's a liar. You know, I had started the ribbing for my academic vest. I tore it out and I still have all the yarn in my bag, but I haven't cast it back on because it's just not the right time just yet. If I'm choosing a yarn, you know, I know I want to make the pattern, but when it comes to choosing the yarn, if I'm like, well, this will be okay, this will do, it won't do. <laughs> what I'm doing is I'm setting myself to be let down when it doesn't turn out as spectacular or as great as I would like it to be. So what I need to do is just set it aside and come back to it. Thank you for showing up and being here. And I do want to say just thank you for all your prayers as I've gone through my healing process. I am feeling more and more like myself. Like this morning, I feel really great. I think that's just because I actually slept through the night for the first time in forever without a kid waking me up or trying to crawl into our bed. And I know I'm starting to feel more like me again because it's fun to like put outfits together and play with clothes like I used to and to put lipstick on like I used to. I used to just love like put on a lipstick, like keep everything else just as it is, but like just put on a fun color. You know, I just love that. So I am feeling more like me and that is only through the grace of God and your prayers. So thank you for interceding upon my behalf and I'll see you next month. Um, you can always chat with me down in the comments or send me messages on Ravelry or Instagram. All that information as far as my usernames and handles are down below and I'll see you next time. Bye.